So in this episode of the Leadersmith Podcast, uh, I want to talk about the profound responsibility of leadership, the, the responsibility, the weight on your shoulders, the, the feeling that, hey, look, I, I am responsible for the destiny or the, the productivity or the, um, the day that my employees are having. I, I want to unpack that a bit because um, it's often overlooked when we look at leadership. Stay tuned. In a world of incompetent bosses, micromanagers, and petty tyrants, you are listening to The Leadersmith. Now, here is your host, Darren Gertis. Okay, so um, last night I was involved in a webinar. I was invited to speak for a few minutes about leadership, and I was talking about something that I talk about in class pretty frequently. I pulled um, uh, the basis of what I was going to do from a, a book called The Steward Leader. And I talked about that. And then I was thinking about uh, the recent quotes that I had uncovered that I used in my podcast as the quotation for contemplation. Those quotations for contemplations come because I'm contemplating them already. And they're, they're very, uh, they're, they're right at the ready because I'm thinking about it because I just read it or, or I've just been over it or whatever. Okay. So the, the book that I was talking from was uh, a book called the steward leader. I use it in my fundamentals of leadership class. Um, and the author is a former seminar uh, president. And, um, and he said this, he said, you cannot own a vision for an organization and also be free in relation to that specific vocational calling. You cannot make the vision your own and also wear the mantle of leadership lightly. Now, what he was meaning by that was, look, you know, we talk about having ownership and having a vision, and those are generally good ish kind of things. But there's a difference between when you when it's your vision and you have to make it happen, as opposed to when you know, this is just where God has led you and you're working at and toward it. And it's a vision that you're chasing, but it's not like, I have to make it happen. There's a, a profound difference there. And if you have to make it happen, because it's all yours, then you're going to treat people differently. You're going to uh, every time somebody has an issue with it, uh, with the vision, with what you're trying to do, it, it's taken as a personal affront to you. And the it, it's weird because the, the higher you go, the, the more successful you are operating that way, the more in bondage you ultimately are because you get tied up and, and you're so tied to that vision that you can't see straight. As opposed to if you're just you know, wearing that mantle of leadership lightly because God has brought that across your path. And that's what, now this doesn't mean that you don't have or pursue vision or that kind of thing. But if you can wear that mantle of leadership lightly, if you can just take what God provides, you can work toward things, that's fine. But if you can just take what God provides and hold it and steward it, that's the name of the book, The Steward Leader, you're just in a very different place. In the one, you're in bondage to that vision, to that thing, to that thing that you must do. In the other, you're free. You're actually liberated from worrying about, you know, is this going to succeed or fail? Because And what will people think about me? No, no, no I'm just stewarding that which God has provided. So that was the jumping off point. And then I thought, you know, there's a deep responsibility here, but there's freedom in that in the two views, but there's a responsibility that goes with it. The first responsibility is this, there's a responsibility on God's part. And what I mean by that is uh, Hudson Taylor, the missionary to China, said um, God's work done God's way will never lack God's provision. And what he means by that is, look, if it's if he wants to make it done and he's working with through you to get it done, he'll provide. It's good. So that's God's responsibility as opposed to your responsibility to just take take the bull by the horns and make it happen. I, I don't want to live that way. I mean, it's just it just seems tiresome to do that. But then there's a second responsibility. And this this responsibility applies to all leadership. Um, it's this there's a difference between very often when we talk about leadership, we talk about like, you know, it's good to be king and I wish I was in charge and those kind of things. But we got to think about the flip side. Like, what's the impact of your leadership on your followers? So uh, there's a great quote by Simon Sinek. He said, leadership is not about being in charge. It's about taking care of those in your charge. Now, 
That's profound. And whether you're talking about, you know, wearing the mantle loosely or not loosely, um, that's still true. And it's hard, it's much harder to do if you're not wearing that mantle loosely. Like if, if you're just, if, if you've got to make it ha happen, it's very easy to run over people, to treat them like an object for your success, to abuse them, to just, just in order to make it happen. It's much less likely to happen if you're wearing the, the, the mantle loosely to, um, to, to do those kinds of things. But now we have to have a mental shift here from these people are objects that are there for me to make myself look good to these people are actually made in the image of God and they have value and worth well beyond the job. And so again, here's the quote, leadership is not about being in charge. It's about taking care of those in your charge. Now, when you make that shift from they're an object to something that um, is profoundly wonderful, made in the image of God. Now you start thinking about taking care of those in your charge and helping them grow, helping them become what they could be, what they should be. And that's your responsibility as a leader. And I'm going to come back to this theme in just a little bit. Seth Godin says it a little bit differently where he talks about it like this. He says that um, leadership is the art of giving people a platform for spreading ideas that work. Now think about that, giving a platform for spreading ideas at work. That means that it's not that you're telling them what to do. You're trying to uh, empower them, to give them the room to be able to grow and breathe and become what they should be. Stephen Covey's definition of leadership was like that. It was helping them realize their own potential that they might not even see. So that's that's the right idea. We're moving that way rather than just thinking like, how can I make sure, how can I control them, make sure that they're doing the thing that they're supposed to be doing? Because if I'm not looking over their shoulder, they're not going to be getting it done. It, it's just a backwards managerial approach. And I get it, managers. Managers have to get things done. They have to, they have to work within the now. They have to make sure that the, the trains are still running on time. But in the process of trying to get things done, very often they overlook or trample upon, even worse, they sometimes trample upon the very people who are supposed to be getting th these things done. They're being terrible examples to those people. There, you know, there's this, um, this great book, um, I'm trying to remember the title, but it, it said this, it said, you're the people that your people are talking about every night when they go home, when they're at dinner. So the, your people are talking about you at dinner at night. But are they cursing you or are they blessing you? And that's, you know, it, it just depends on how you treat them. But if you have a mindset like Simon Sinek's mindset, where, again, Sinek said that leadership is not about being in charge, it's about taking care of those people in your charge. Or if you have an idea, uh, the mindset like Seth Godin, who says that leadership is the art of giving people a platform for spreading ideas, that's very different than micromanaging or trying to control them or make them do your thing so that you can look good. And again, it all comes back to, are you wearing that mantle of leadership loosely or do you have to make it all done? you know, all by yourself. So there, this room brings me to one, uh, actually there's two more quotes that I want to provide. And again, a number of these I just talked about recently as the quotation for contemplation in episodes. And I'm just kind of, uh, it, it's these thoughts are, are percolating within me and that's why I'm thinking through it as I am. Uh, Sam Chan, I, I just read the, uh, the sequence to success. Great book. Uh, Sam, Chan, Sam Chan's uh, other book, by the way, I mean, all these are good books. So S Seneca wrote book, good books. Uh, Seth Godin wrote a number of really good books. Uh, Sam Chan also wrote a book called Leadership Pain. It's, it's part of what we don't think about. Like the first half is incredible of leadership pain. We don't think about like, yeah, there's pain in leadership. There's, it's not all the, the upside, the good stuff. And here I want you to focus on the responsibility. He said this, the first job of leaders is to inspire hearts, then convince head, then only then to give direction to the hands of those who do the work. So you inspire the hearts, you convince the head, and then and only then do you give direction to the hands of those who do the work. Now that's that's really profound. If you think about it in that order, in that sequence, you're you're casting that vision, you're inspiring, and that vision, as Kuzas and Posner tell us, should always be a shared vision. So you're dealing with the vision, getting everybody to think about what that profound future should be, and then we convince them convince it. So we get the heart first, then we convince the head, then we go to the head and say, yeah, yeah, and rationally, this is the right thing too, because we already got the emotions. And now when the heart and the head are lined up, the hands start doing the work very freely. 
Okay. So, but again, that's just your approach has to be that you're speaking to their heart first, uh, just like Senek and just like Godin. Sam Chan has it right. And then the final quote I got from The Magic of Thinking Big, I just finished that book, uh, David Schwartz, and he was talking about a person in the book who said, so here, let me give you the background of the story. So this guy, it was an incredible boss, and he, uh, when he laid someone off because they weren't really producing like they should, he worked with that guy for, I think it was like 18 days until he helped him find a new job somewhere else that was a better fit for him. Now, that's a lot of work. I mean, it's spending time that he doesn't necessarily have or could, could have put to some other productivity somewhere else, but it was profound. And it was profound because he was telling everybody else in that organization, I care about you. See what I'm doing for this guy that we just let go? I, I care about him that much. I definitely care about you. And I think that's, that's just a, a message that we forget about when we say, oh, well, he's gone. He's not here anymore. No. You're sending a message to all the survivors when somebody's let go. Now, in that, that same manager said this. He was asked, well, why are you spending that much time doing that? He said, whoever is under a man's power is under his protection, too. And wow, what a profound shift in the way that you think about your responsibility as a leader. If these, pe if, if I have a dozen followers, a uh, do dozen people that work for me, I, they're under my power, but they're also simultaneously under my protection. I need to do right by them. I need to help them grow. I need them. In fact, I need to help them to the point where if they grow into a new position somewhere else and leave me, that's okay. In fact, that's good. Okay. So whoever is under a man's power is under his protection too. Is I mean, what a profound way to think. And if we think through these kinds of quotes, if we let them shape the way that we lead, think about our leadership responsibility differently, we're just going to be better leaders. And I, I hope this episode helped you think through some things too. And I hope it helps you become the kind of leader that you want to follow. That's the entire reason that I do this podcast, because I want a lot of people to become better leaders because you're having a profound impact on those people. Every night at dinner, they're talking about you. They're either saying, bad things about you because you're a bad kind of leader or they're blessing you and saying, wow, I really appreciate my boss. Be that kind of person where they appreciate you as a boss. Be the leader you would want to follow. Hey, thanks for your time. If you like this podcast, consider subscribing. Uh, leave me a comment as well on uh, you know below because uh, your references will be read by other people. And, and if you appreciate it, if you've grown from it, if you've learned from it, tell others about it. Thanks so much for your time.